Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Thank you so much for joining us tonight. This is a wonderful turnout. I'm so pleased. I'm so happy that you all are with us. Um, I had like more formal remarks. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, my name is Kaylee. Um, I am a faculty member here at the University of Oregon. I am a community organizer with the Party for Socialism and Liberation. I am a daughter and a sister and um, man, what else am I? Um, I, <laughs> I am very importantly a member of University of Oregon faculty and staff for justice in Palestine who has brought us here today. Thank you. Yeah, forgive me for being a little rattled. My adrenaline, if you saw me speak earlier, it's gonna be a very different vibe right now. Um, my, my adrenaline has been carrying me through the day, um, but I'm so inspired to be here with you all. Um, as you all very likely know, we are here. Oh, and I see more students joining us. Welcome, I'm so happy you're here. Um, we have put together this program to bring awareness to something that we don't feel our university or many, any universities in the United States um, have brought awareness to, and that is the victims of what is called scholasticide in Gaza. If you don't know what that is, there will be lots of talks about that tonight. Um, up here, I'll get you a little bit oriented um, so that you are just aware. Um, up here we have, let's see, six posters with the names of, um, of university presidents, deans, and professors at universities in Gaza uh, who are no longer with us due to Israeli occupation and genocide. Many of them were targeted assassinations. Um, some of them died defending their universities from bombing. Um, as you can see, we also have 11, um, we have 11 candles up here and each of these candles uh, has the name of a university in Gaza that no longer exists um, or is, has been damaged or destroyed. Um, so we're here today to bring awareness to this because we feel it is, we feel that it is our obligation as faculty and staff at a higher education institution to bring awareness to this issue on our campus um, and to make the connections between higher education um, and the fight for Palestinian liberation. So I have many speeches. Uh, we, we've got a great program for you tonight. We are going to start off with a number by the local ceasefire chorus. Um, if you'll please uh, give your round of applause to yeah. welcome them. Thank you, and we are not actually here to perform, but to invite you to sing with us. We're gonna sing a song from Abigail Bingson of the Bingsons. <sighs> I'll sing a line and sing it back to me. I pray for peace and liberation. I pray for peace and liberation. Pray for peace in every nation. Pray for peace in every nation. Pray for safety for all children. Pray for safety for all children. Pray for justice and love. Pray for justice and love. I pray for peace and liberation. Pray for peace in every nation. That much. I pray for peace and liberation. Pray for peace in every nation. I pray for safety for all children. I pray for justice and love. I pray for safety for all children. Pray for justice and love. I pray for peace and liberation. Every nation. Pray for peace in every nation. Safety for our children. Pray for safety for our children. 
pray for justice and love. I sing, I sing for peace and liberation. Harmony's welcome. Pray for peace in every nation. Pray for safety for all children. Pray for justice and love. I sing for peace and liberation. Sing for peace in every nation. I sing for safety for our children. Say for justice and love. Camp, I camp for peace and liberation. Pray for peace in every nation. I camp for safety for our children. I camp for justice and love. I pray, I pray for peace and liberation. Pray for peace in every nation. I pray for safety for our children. Pray for justice and justice and love. I pray for justice and love. I pray for justice and love. Thanks for being a part of Ceasefire Choir. And we will be here at the encampment, 10.30 on Thursday, if you want to come sing more, learn more songs to carry and bring. We need more singing in this movement. <laughs> Big round of applause for the Ceasefire Choir. Thank you. Big round of applause for leading us in that. Thank you. I particularly, as many of you may have heard today in my impassioned uh, asks, and demands of our university. I particularly particularly resonated um, with the call for safety for all children. Um, I work in the College of Education in a child abuse prevention research center, and I don't think there's any better way for me to fight for safety for all children than to be here with all of you. So thank you. I would like, again, I am emceeing and facilitating some brilliance tonight, and that's all I am doing. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Chris, who is going to speak to us a little bit about scholasticide, what it is, um, how it has manifested in Gaza, um, and then we are going to hear from Justin. Justin is going to read us, and he'll talk about this a bit, Justin is going to read us a letter um, that Palestinian uh, presidents of Palestinian universities sent. Yeah, please sit down. Please do not feel the need to sit, uh, stand. We are going to be here till seven o'clock, so feel free to to sit down um, uh, if you if you would like to. Um, then we are going to hear from Justin. Justin is going to read us a letter that was sent to the National uh, Students for Justice in Palestine, as well as um, just student encampments. Um, thanking them for their bravery. Um, and so we're going to hear them, and then uh, we'll go from there. So everybody uh, join me in welcoming Chris. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Chris. I work at Pathway Oregon. I'm an SCIU 503 steward. And, and I wanted to talk to everyone today about what is going on in Gaza as it relates to scholasticide and the systemic destruction of the educational system of the Palestinian hey, people. The Got it. Try that sentence one more time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank you all for showing up today. I'd like to thank you all for standing in solidarity with the Palestinian people who, as we have seen this morning, are being given no place to go by the cowardly and cruel Zionist entity. We also raise our voices in condemnation of the administrators of this campus's refusal to even condemn the actions of the U.S. and their lackeys in the region, never mind their refusal to engage in good faith with student organizers. Exactly. Shame. Shame. This is all occurring in the midst of what the United States Human Rights Council has termed an act of scholasticide, or the systemic destruction of an entire people's educational system. 80% of schools have been destroyed in Gaza as of the end of last month. The last university was leveled in January. Over 5,000 students 
more than 200 teachers and nearly 100 university professors alone have been killed since the conflict began. Jeez. In addition, 195 cultural heritage sites have been destroyed with bombs that say made in the USA on the side of them. Shame. And finally, the destruction of the Central Archives of Gaza, which contained 150 years of those people's history, was wiped out by Zionist bombs at the behest of the United States government. Shame. I ask that in light of this, we mark this moment with a moment of silence to remember those who have been killed in Zionist push to control the Middle East and that we remember those who are no longer able to raise their voices with us today. And now I say to you all today, the time for silence is over. The time for shouting, singing, and liberation has begun. Long live the students, long live the fighters, and long live Palestine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, everybody. My name is Justin. I'm an employee here, an alumni of the University of Oregon, member of your community. This letter is from these 20 uh, presidents of Palestinian universities to you, the students and faculty uh, of the encampment. I'll read you their words. This is a letter from Palestinian universities to students and faculty in Gaza, in Gaza solidarity encampments in US academic institutions. In a moment of great darkness, your protests erupt and give us hope for humanity, that justice is not an abstract concept, but a continuous struggle that connects us all. Your values are emancipating the university from structural racism and complicity with power and colonialism. The situation in Palestine has reached increased genocidal levels marked by the mass targeting of Palestinian life by killing and displacement, the destroying of social, cultural, and all educational institutions, and the aim to reduce Palestinians to bare life with no political and collective future. Thanks. <laughs> your leaders, you are leaders in the call for justice with your bodies on the university campuses and in the streets speaking truth and justice loud and clear. You stand for the courage that is needed to take action strongly for justice and freedom and determinately against systems of genocide and racism. We know the risks you are taking in face of the repressive measures that are taken against university spaces built on challenging the powers benefiting from silence. At a time when the voices of the oppressed are intentionally silenced, your solidarity serves as a beacon of hope. Your actions are a resounding message that injustice and oppression will not be tolerated. We draw inspiration from the courage of those who refuse and resist the continuing injustices of settler colonialism and military occupation. And we welcome you at our universities in a liberated Palestine. Thank you so much, Justin and Chris. That was so powerful. A um, couple things I wanted to share with you. Um, I hope you'll forgive me. Um, my phone is dead, so there's a couple things I forgot. Um, there's a reason that this is called um, a vigil and speak out, right? Because there's this profound sadness and grief, um, and that serves nobody on its own. Um, thank you so much, Chris. Um, we want to move our grief and our anger into action, into concrete 
things that we as university faculty and staff and students can do to make our university better, um, which is demonstrated by this encampment, right? Um, so I just wanted to bring awareness to that. We could have held just a vigil and we importantly decided that we would be speaking out in addition. Uh, we didn't want it. Uh, we feel that the best way to honor those that we've lost is through speaking out about what's happening. So I wanted to share that with you all. Um, next, I'm so excited to invite uh, Dr. Andrea Herrera um, to speak with us a little bit about a statement that she has collaborated on uh, with some members of our local community. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Herrera. everyone thank you for being here my name is Dr. Herrera many of you are my students I could not be prouder of you um, I'm, I could not be I get quiet when I am moved um, I could not be prouder of all of you um, including many of my students that I see um, in front of me okay so I'm going to be reading um, a joint statement on anti-semitism this was written uh, Three groups uh, collaborated on this statement. Those groups are the UO Faculty and Staff for Justice in Palestine, UO Jewish Voice for Peace, and Jewish Voice for Peace, Eugene. Okay. During the week of April 29th, 2024, in response to the University of Oregon's financial complicity with Israel's ongoing war in Palestine, which has destroyed 80% of schools and all universities in Gaza. A broad coalition of student organizers set up a solidarity encampment known as the Popular University for Gaza on the UO lawn. Faculty and staff mobilized to support students' right to protest and call for UO's divestment from Jasper Ridge Hedge Fund, which has financial ties to defense contractors linked to the Israeli occupation. UO's implementation of a boycott, divestment, and sanctions, or BDS campaign, which has appeared in ASUO proceedings as far back as 2018, and the cessation of academic exchanges with Israeli universities. The groups most closely involved with the encampment include students from all religious and ethnic backgrounds. At the University of Oregon, Muslims, Jews, Christians, atheists, and those with other spiritual, religious, and or secular beliefs have found solidarity in their hour, opposition to colonialism, genocide, and war crimes. These students are astute scholars of academic texts as well as educated consumers of media. And they know that many in the broader community may seek to distort their message by weaponizing accusations of anti-Semitism against the encampment. For this reason, faculty and staff for justice in Palestine at UO and Jewish Voice for Peace at UO have come together to state unequivocally the following. Number one, we acknowledge that anti-Semitism has been an animating force throughout the history of the United States. Hostility, discrimination, prejudice, and violence toward Jews or people perceived as Jews, i.e. the figure of the Jew, has animated more than a thousand years of European Christian culture and is entangled with anti-blackness, Islamophobia, xenophobia, and nativism to this day. Number two, we reject any potential criticism that the goals of the solidarity encampment are inherently anti-Semitic. The weaponization of anti-Semitism is a political tool to preemptively delegitimize political voices and the diversity of Jews. Jewish students, faculty, and staff are already a driving force in and welcomed and encouraged to become a part of our cross-religious, cross-cultural movement for solidarity with all victims of colonialism, war, racism, and bigotry, including anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Solidarity with the oppressed and colonized and working together for collective liberation has been a core feature of traditions of Jewish political struggles, among them the Jewish labor boon or the American la Jewish labor movement, not despite but because of Jewish experiences of marginalization, oppression, and genocide. So number three, we adopt Jewish voice for pieces, definitions of anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, which stayed in part. Excuse me. Anti-Semitism is discrimination, targeting, violence, and dehumanizing stereotypes directed at Jews because they are Jewish. 
We understand anti-Semitism as historically contextual, situated amidst interrelated conditions and struggles. That's why we fight anti-Semitism within and as part of broader struggles against oppression and for collective liberation. For instance, white nationalist violence has been on the rise in the US, fueled by anti-immigrant and racist manifestos, sentiments, and conspiracy theories, such as the Great Replacement Theory. Jews are among the targets of white nationalist violence along with black people, immigrants, Muslims, and trans and queer people among others. Our safety is bound together with the safety of all people and none of us is free if we aren't all free. Attacking Jewish individuals or communal spaces for being Jewish or blaming the Jewish people for the actions of the Israeli government is anti-Semitic and unacceptable and flatly contrary to the values of our movement. Our movement for justice in Palestine stands firm as an anti-racist movement, which of course includes, includes opposing all acts of anti-Semitism. In other words, anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitic and many Jews are anti-Zionists. Our opposition to all forms of anti-Semitism includes opposition to the targeting of Jewish-led solidarity encampments, for example, at UCLA. This conflation of anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism is itself anti-Semitic and its erasure of the voices, stories, and experiences of Jewish individuals across the diaspora, some of whom have actively protested the Zionist project for over a century and are continuing to protest the Israeli genocide and fight for Palestinian liberation in the current moment. So number four, we reject the UO's use of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. Numerous scholars, human rights experts, and Israeli international civil society groups, including Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, and the American Civil Liberties Union, have warned that adopting the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism protects Israel from legitimate criticism and prohibits protected speech. Using this definition, as the United States Senate is now dangerously considering, is harmful to U of O's principles of dialogue, education, and academic freedom, and its continued use will have significant negative impact on the ability of U of O students use of any definition that conflates uh, Judaism with Zionism will have significant and negative impact on the ability of UO students, faculty, and staff, including Jews, to have meaningful conversations about issues of racism, settler colonialism, genocide, and scholasticide. In the, best collective, in the collective best interest of all U of O students, faculty, and staff, we urge the University of Oregon to adopt a definition of anti-Semitism informed by the one above from Jewish Voice for Peace, which emphasizes the crucial distinction between Jewish individuals and the state of Israel, as opposed to any expanded definition which conflates criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism, such as the IHRA definition. We implore the UO administration to follow the lead of the Jerusalem Declaration in clarifying the definition of anti-Semitism and avoiding the simplistic conflation, simplistic conflation of Judaism with Zionism. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Herrera. You and many individuals in our community from Jewish Voice for Peace, Eugene and UO, Jewish Voice for Peace, collaborated on that statement. And I, we wanted to read that statement because for us, it is a, it's going to be a tool. Um, as faculty and staff for justice in Palestine, we are going to use um, the statement and the sentiments within it to pressure the university through multiple uh, multiple angles uh, or strategies, tactics, if you will, to um, to adopt a definition of anti-Semitism that does not conflate Judaism with Zionism and does not conflate um, Israel with Jewish people and Jewish identity. So that's very exciting. Um, as a, as Dr. Herrera was reading, um, I was reminded of a quote from Nelson Mandela um, thinking about the ways in which all forms of oppression are connected, right? And he famously said, I said this on the news earlier, <laughs> um, that, uh, uh, that we, uh, our freedom uh, is contingent upon the freedom of the Palestinians. Um, 
And I, I see that the, that solidarity is, is critical in this moment and recognizing the ways that oppression um, impacts um, and settler colonialism impacts all of us. I'm now going, I'm pleased to introduce um, our next speaker, Dr. Jeff Gordon, who's gonna speak to us a little bit about divestment. Um, so please join me in uh, welcoming Jeff. Can you hear me? All right. Greetings, everyone. My name is Dr. Gordon, and I'm a clinical psychologist. You may have seen me speak at the first student rally months ago or at several other actions since October. Early on, when our rallies were still small, it was important to me that people saw anti-Zionist Jews like me speaking out against colonization and genocide. Since then, with the hard work of comrades in this crowd, I'm proud to say that our movement has already achieved several victories at the local and state level, and I want to be sure that the students here know this. We convinced the Eugene City Council to pass a ceasefire resolution last year. We fought procedural interference and character assassination from Democratic Party operatives, and we successfully rewrote the local party platform to include anti-genocide, anti-apartheid, ceasefire, and divestment policies with overwhelming support from the rank and file. That's right. Yeah. What I've learned is that victory is possible, but there won't be any easy wins. I'm telling you this because I wrote a draft divestment resolution for the city of Eugene and organized a campaign with a working group from the Springfield Eugene Anti-Imperialist Coalition. Yeah, give them a round of applause. They've been behind a lot of stuff here. Thanks to the efforts of that working group, we received endorsements from many community groups, including SJP. We presented the divestment resolution to city council on April 8th with incredible testimonies during, during public comment. Uh, we had the choir show up. I, I suggest you go back and watch the YouTube video. The city is now researching the possibility of updating their investment policy based on our recommendations. There are no guarantees, but it was the first step. So, I believe if you can <clears throat> I believe that if you can succeed with the divestment efforts at the University of Oregon, that momentum will carry over into actual changes in city policy. The fight is about to get uglier, but the people of Eugene and the people of Gaza are counting on you to win. So remember this, it is not those who can inflict the most, but those who can endure the most who will conquer. Yeah. Now, one more thing, repeat after me. In our thousands, in our millions, we are all Palestinians. In our thousands, in our millions, we are all Palestinians. In our thousands, in our millions, we are all Palestinians. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, I wanted to, so on the topic of divestment really quickly, um, I think our, our University of Oregon faculty and staff for justice in Palestine, newly formed, um, has identified uh, something on our campus, and that's that we already have a divestment campaign on campus. We already have a plan and a policy on ethical investment, right? Ethical investment policy. So uh, for us, we, right, we have a plan, our, our campus has a plan already to divest from fossil fuels, and that's great, right? Round of applause. Great. So then when this encampment has been met with the claim that divestment is performative, we reject that. We reject that because we are already divesting, <laughs> right? So for us, 
the issue of ethical investment should extend to weapons manufacturers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Just wanting to give folks updates while we're also working our way through the program. Uh, I believe we have one last speaker, and if I'm wrong, folks, please let me know. Um, uh, please w join me in welcoming uh, faculty member Justin to come and speak with us. Am I missing? Jason. Jason. Justin? Justin already went. Jason. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> faculty member Jason is going to speak with us now. Thank you. You're fine, Kaylee. Kaylee has uh, a lot on her plate and has been working tirelessly uh, for this movement. Uh, thank you, Kaylee. Thank you, Kaylee. Um, my name is Jason Sides. Uh, I'm an instructor uh, at the Knight Campus Graduate Internship uh, Program uh, in, bio in bioinformatics. Uh, and um, tonight I'll be reading a poem I'm sure most, if not all of you, have read at this point. Um, I may have to pause at moments. Um, the poem is If I Must Die by Rifat al Riha, um, who was a Palestinian writer, poet, activist, and professor. Uh, he taught literature and creative writing at the now destroyed Islamic University of Gaza. He also co-founded the organization We Are Not Numbers, which provides uh, English language writing workshops for young Palestinian aspiring writers in Gaza, matching them with experienced authors. On December 6th, he and his brother, his sister, and four of his uh, nephews were killed by the state of Israel, deliberately targeted their apartment surgically bombed out of the entire building where it's located, according to corroborated eyewitness, eyewitnesses and family accounts. If I Must, if I must Die by Rifat Alaria. If I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings. Make it white with a long tail so that a child somewhere in Gaza, while looking heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad who left in a blaze and bid no one farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself. Seize the kite, my kite you made, flying up above and thinks for a moment, and thinks for a moment, an angel is there, bringing back love. If I must die, let it bring hope, let it be a tale. Jason had the hardest job of any of us. Uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, for those of you who joined us a little bit late, I just want to acknowledge you and say thank you so much for coming and give a little orientation to the vigil that we have set up here, that we will, uh, members of the University of Oregon faculty and staff for justice in Palestine will be delivering shortly to Johnson Hall, to the steps of Johnson Hall. Um, up here, uh, we have 11 candles um, that have the names of the 11 universities in Gaza that have been destroyed. Um, we have six, we have six posters of, uh, I'm sorry. We have six posters with the names of the presidents of Palestinian universities, deans, professors who have been killed. And uh, I am now going to ask that members of University of Oregon faculty and staff for justice in Palestine, as well as other uh, faculty and staff here at the University of Oregon, please come up and grab 
some of the items that are here and join me in a walk um, down to Johnson Hall. The rest of you are welcome to come with us. We will be right back. Um, to come and connect with all of you. I want to thank you all so much for coming. Please give a big round of applause to um, those who participated in our program. We will be right back. That's hard. <laughs> <laughs>